If you did the work from the last video, you'll have a list of things that you care about, what you really want, and what you're curious about. And in this video, we'll talk about how to make that list actionable. So the first step is to prioritize your list. And you're gonna do that by looking at the things that light a fire in you, what you're most interested in. So you're gonna go through everything there and see which items jump out and pick a top five. So this is not set in stone. You can come back in and you will come back and revisit this. If you've got your list of five things and it's just common sensible things that you should do anyway, but you feel dead inside and feel no passion or motivation to actually do those things, then you've probably got the wrong list. And you need to go back to the last video again and think about what you really care about and what you really want and not just what you should do. You can take a second pass at the prioritization and look this time at what's going to make the biggest impact in your life by whatever criteria, you know, financially, family wise, potential, etc. And go through your list again and come up with a second group of five. And the next step after that is going to be to try and merge those lists, balance our interest level, fire inside and what's going to make the biggest impact in your life. Then you'll have a single list of five bullet point items. The next stage is to drill down further on each of those five bullets and understand why. You know, why have you picked that item? What do you really want to achieve out of that? Quite simply, you just ask why. I want to work on my health and fitness this year. And you could ask why. And I, I want to lose weight, for example, and there's long-term health benefits in that, et cetera, et cetera. But if you keep asking me why and why and why, ultimately what I want to do by focusing on health is to have the energy to turn up the best I can at work and at home. That's my ultimate why. And we get to the ultimate why for a process improvement uh, technique called the five whys. Um, now, any of you that got young kids will really understand uh, this concept in practical terms. You come up with uh, a statement, I wanna focus on health, then you ask why, and this is your, your toddler or your three to five year old that's asking this. Now, you have to give them an answer that's suitable for kids, so you can't use any weasel words, you've actually just gotta answer in the most honest terms. And inevitably, when uh, you give them an answer, they'll ask why again. Now, you do this five times, and you get ultimately to a deeper level of understanding about specifically what you wanna do, what you're really trying to do, and why that is you know, how that connects to your values, realization of your potential, what your passions, purpose, et cetera, are, and so on. So do that for each of your five bullet points. Ask your five whys for each of the five bullets and come up with a list of, of insights from that into what you're really trying to achieve. The next step is to try and group these in, into themes. Look for common factors amongst the five different items. You might look at interdependencies. What would you do first and second and third, et cetera? How are those connected? What values connects them? What fields connect them? What sort of being, doing and having things do you find on the list? So being things, you know, how you uh, express your values in the real world are doing, what types of activities, who you're working with, what type of work is that, what's it look and feel like? And obviously having what experiences or things do you want to have in your list of things that you really want. So hopefully that uh, exercise will give you yet another further level of insight and uh, you'll be able to see the commonalities uh, between all the different items on your list, hopefully. And you might even be able to identify a golden thread. So golden thread is a, a consistent theme or area of interest that you see. And with that lens, looking back into the past, you can spot it everywhere. As you look into the future, the things that you really want, again, you can spot that everywhere. Now, for me, it was a love of new experiences, that kind of uh, experiential, sensualist focus. You know, I, I wanted to do new things, try new things, uh, eat new foods, meet new people, all of that sort of stuff. And that's been a driver for much of the activity in my life. In fairness, like a lot of people. I also liked putting on a show all the way back from um, my DJing days and, and event promotion days through to what I'm doing now. And so even in my consulting, there was something about your milestones and, and presentations and workshops and things that we did there. And also teaching a, of new consultants, which I did quite a lot of in my consulting career. So don't worry if your a golden thread is not immediately apparent. What might happen, what will likely happen in fairness, is that as you begin to experiment and get your hands on uh, the various, the, your five bullet points and the actions that come out of those, you'll start to get uh, a, a better perspective. Some things will start to become clear, the things you like, don't like, what you're drawn to, what you're good at, etc., which will hopefully start identifying that golden thread for you. And the reason you might want to have a golden thread, because it, 
it allows you to go further and faster as you continue to focus on areas um, ideally that you're interested in and good at and other people need or find value in etc. The final step I'm going to describe really quickly in this video is the acronym Real Deep. We've got our five bullet points. The tendency for a lot of people might be just to jump in and have a look on the internet and order some books and then kind of forget about it and that might peter out after a couple of weeks. Real stands for research, engage, analyze and learn. So we do all of our research with an end in mind uh, to answer a specific question, which typically is what are the steps in what I'm trying to do? What's the shape and size of it? How do people typically go about it? What are the risks of it and obstacles? Um, you know, how much does it cost? What sort of help might I need, etc. And deep is about different ways to turn your ideas into actions. D is for decisions. Now what I found a lot in my consulting career is not always did I turn up after weeks or months of analysis on a project with every single insight was a revolutionary and never heard of by the client. You know, typically some of those items on the list will be things that they thought about already but just hadn't pulled the trigger on. They hadn't made a decision to commit to actually put that into practice. Now you find the same in your own life. Your quickest win in transformation might be just to make a decision. It might be just to make a decision to explore other options at work. It might be to make a decision to prioritize family or it might be a decision to focus on your health this year or it might be a decision to finally get started on that book or whatever it is. The first way to take action on your ideas is to make a decision. Look for an embedded decision there and see if you can make that decision straight away or what limited set of data uh, that you might be able to, to get in to actually make that decision. Otherwise you'll suffer analysis paralysis and it might go on forever. The first E is for experiences. Uh, it's much better to actually get hands on and to attend a meetup, for example, to meet other people doing what you already want to do. If you actually meet somebody, you can ask all the dumb questions. People love helping other people and they'll get you a lot further faster in terms of the look and feel and understanding your subject. The next E is for experiments. And that's when you might want to try out uh, different uh, hypotheses uh, or ideas and see which one works best. You might want to write and film and edit and post a video on LinkedIn, for example. That might be an experiment. You might do one, then assess how it's gone and decide what you want to do next. And a project is when you've already decided to do something which is likely to take a, a good period of time and that could even be more than a couple of weeks. It allows you to stay organised and to, to get help with what you're trying to achieve. Track progress over time, etc. Change courses required. In summary, take your list of things that you really care about. Try and prioritise those by your level of interest and also the impact it's going to make on your life. Pick a top five. Do the five whys exercise to drill down on your ultimate why for each of those. See what insights you can get into yourself and into what you're trying to achieve. Then look for a way to get started on those to make them actionable. Either with real, you know, a time bound, a couple of hours per bullet point, researching and coming up with your learnings and a concrete action ideally for each of those bullet points. And look at deep, any embedded decisions, experiences you can have in the real world, an experiment that you want to run, or even how to get set up with a project. And we'll return to projects and, and how to execute better in the next video. Until next time, all the best.